what's the difference between sort of Maven's passive opportunity versus some of the other stuff you can get involved with? Why don't you kind of walk us through some of the research you did on that? For those of you guys that like the opportunity that Michael talks about in the comparisons and, and you lead to the conclusion that maybe it does make sense to get involved with this at some level, it does require at least $50,000 to participate. I put $100,000 into a project last fall in Baton Rouge and I have sat it, I just basically set it and forgot it, right? This is just something that's been extremely easy for me. I signed a couple pieces of paper and sent a wire over and it was done. If you'd like to get involved, you like the idea about it, you can email prefer at vipfinancialeducation.com spelled just like it sounds, prefer, which stands for passive real estate flips, easy returns and make sure to include a first name, your last name, and uh, a phone number. Let's go through sort of the Maven versus other investment opportunities where you can get a, you know, a, a, a rate of return on your money um, and just sort of see whether or not it holds up. Yeah, absolutely. So um, across all projects right now, and this is an absolute staggering number, especially since it's 100% passive, like we've talked about, across all projects at this point since the inception of this platform is 24% cash on cash. And then I'm going to rattle off some other places where people have their money parked and just give the comparison, like he said. So the only thing that I would say probably even remotely comes close to this would be syndication. You know, so syndication is basically where multiple investors are getting involved in a project. I have done syndication in the past. I'm not the biggest fan of it because a couple reasons. One, your money is parked for a longer period of time. Typical syndication programs are three to five years and you've got no ability to get your money out. So, you know, you better be getting a high rate of return because pulling that money back out is not an option once you put it into it. And secondly, I don't like to forecast real estate that far out. The Maven projects, what I love about them is most professional real estate investors and builders and folks like Joe and Maven that are doing these luxury flips around the country. You can read the tea leaves and project a six to nine to 12 month out in any given market of what the real estate trends are going to look like. Are there pending market corrections going to be happening? So inside that 12 month window, you've got a really good view on what's going to be happening there. Anyone that tells you that they can predict a real estate market two, three, four, five years out is either naive enough to believe themselves or they're lying. You know, so syndication, your money's sunk. You do not have the ability to turn it over multiple times. You can get good rates of return, not even the 24%. It would be less than that, but even a, you know, 15 to 17%. But again, the forecasting is what really scares me there. A lot of market corrections, a lot of different things can happen inside of a five-year window. And with the Maven projects, you simply don't have to worry about that. If we're taking a look at real estate, which, you know, is something I love, something you love, been doing it for a long time. I've been a long-term buy and hold guy for many, many years. If you take a look at the averages for buy and hold residential annualized, if you're getting anywhere between six and 8%, you're doing great. So if you look on the low end of that at the 6%, you are with the Maven projects, prefer lending, you are 4Xing what you would get out of buy and hold real estate. And with buy and hold real estate, you've got your money sunk. So if you're going out and you're buying those properties, you're undoubtedly going to have a down payment. So uh, there again, you yeah, got you're going to have 20, 20% gobbled up no matter what, just debt equity. Yep, and you're and it's just gonna be sitting there until you ultimately, if you decide to sell the house. On the high end of that at the eight percent, which you're knocking it out of the park, the Maven Prefer lending project is 3x that. If you're looking at buy and hold commercial real estate, you are doing really well if you're getting nine and a half percent. So if you're at the top of the range there at nine and a half percent, you're still just shy of three X. If you use an annualized with the Maven projects, it would be about equal at 28%. It would be a three X what buy and hold commercial real estate would be. Another would be REITs. So real estate investment trust, very popular, nice rates of return. If you're getting anywhere between eight and 11% on a REIT, you are doing really, really well. So let's take the high end of that range at 11%. The Maven Prefer projects are 2X plus what your uh, rates of return would be on a REIT. And a REIT, again, you're gonna have your money sunk for a while. It's not in and out in six to eight, 10 months. So there again, your capital is gonna be deployed and you cannot expect it back anytime soon. Short-term rentals, we've talked often about STRs here on the channel. We both own some. You 
you actually uh, took yours off the market and decided that it wasn't necessarily for you anymore. But if you're doing STRs, which a lot of people are still, you know, super bullish on those right now, I'm a little bit more bearish. I think you are as well. If you're getting a 10% rate of return annualized on those, you are doing excellent. So again, the Maven Preferred Lending Platform would be 2.4x what you would be doing if you were crushing it in an STR. And again, on an STR, you are having to at least put that 20% down. On an STR, it's usually more than that. You know, most of the time that's gonna be a different type of loan that is gonna be particular to short-term rentals. There's only a handful of lenders that will go out there and, and lend on those projects. So again, you're sinking 10, you know, 20 to 25%. Uh, into that house until you decide to sell it. So of course you're not continuing to turn that money over or able to pull it out and to put it into another investment class. Yeah, and I, I mean, to that point too, let's not forget that you're building a business. And I've mentioned it over and over on this channel that by removing my property from the market, it was really more of a lifestyle decision given the, the different businesses I'm running. It was a competition between those businesses and the STR business. If somebody wants to build an STR business, I'm 100% for it, but I wouldn't be recommending going out there and buying properties and putting 20% down on them like I did uh, uh, on the property that I'm sitting in right now. It cost me almost $250,000 when it was all said and done to put the down payment and do all the decor and amenities and and uh, furnishings and, and upkeep on the property. Every appliance needed replaced, the well pump needed replaced. It just the list went on and on and on, but it still made me almost a quarter million dollars as well. It was definitely a good venture, but keep that in mind if you're considering the STR space. We would always recommend looking into more of the partnership model like Michael and Katrina's model than what I did. I, I've always said that I think I did it wrong after discovering what they were doing and I would have no problem getting back into SCRs. I definitely think it could, you, could still be, you could still be bullish on it and, and be right. Um, but it's, it's not like Maven where you just sit back and wait for your check. You know, 100%. And, and to your point there, you know, with the, the arbitrage or the partnership model, you know, the STRs would make a heck of a lot more sense. If you're out there buying a, a short term rental, it's not the normal institutional lending channels. You have to go through a DSCR conventional uh, lender, which are few and far between. And they literally analyze the project as far as potential earnings on it. So there's a lot of hoops to jump through. It's not as simple as walking into the bank and, and just getting a traditional mortgage. So a little bit more hair right. on it. If you're looking at historical returns on real estate, only 5%. And again, let me reiterate that across all projects, the cash on cash rate of return on the Maven Prefer model is 24%. Historical return rates on real estate, only 5% of real estate investors earn over 15% returns annualized. That's a staggering number. So 95% of all real estate investors on average earn less than 15%. The really, really good ones are 10 to 12% and the average would be closer to 8%, 7 or 8%. And then they're still happy with those rates of return. The housing market, 30 year average, 5.4% annualized rate of return. So close to you know four and a half x that with the maven preferred lending project those would be numbers that we would stack up against other uh, potential investment vehicles and obviously the numbers speak for themselves you can find right. these numbers right. if just doing some light research online these are not just being pulled off the top of my head and obviously we've analyzed each one of the projects that we've done with the maven prefer lending model and 24 percent is the number I want to go into some of those deals with you. Let's go ahead and cut a third video for this series. Like I said, I think that'll just make it a little bit easier for people to digest these. So we'll link all of those together in the description so you guys all have access to it. But would love to come back on and go through some of those projects. But that's very interesting information. Very much appreciate uh, the effort you went through to, to uh, put that together. I think it at least demonstrates getting some money into Maven would make a lot more sense than just ignoring it altogether. It's not about all your eggs in one basket or another. And I think, again, we agree that diversifying is going to be a smart move. Regardless, uh, it certainly seems to top the list when you, when you break it down that way. So appreciate everybody tuning in. Michael, thank you for your effort. Guys, come back for the 
uh, sort of property review video. We'll get into some of the projects and I'd like to have Michael break down two specifically into more detail so that you guys can kind of see uh, exactly how things are unfolding. Again, if you'd like to get involved and at least join the waiting list, there's no obligations. You're not gonna be spammed. We won't sell your information. It's just to get your questions answered and to make sure that you have a, have a heads up when a new project is being announced by Maven. So go ahead and email prefer at vipfinancialeducation.com. Email will be in the description for you too to make it easier and include a first name, last name, and phone number. Guys, we'll see you on the next video. Until then, make it a great day and keep on cash flowing. See you soon.